All right, folks. I, you ever procrastinate on something and you're like, I should have done that a long time ago? This is one of those cases. Hey, friends. This is the beginning of our baseline in a journey we're going to take with these Pioneer CS88As. If you know about these speakers, awesome. If you can skip like the next 30 seconds. If you don't know about them, the CS series, uh, this particular model and style was 1970s. They are iconic. Uh, these are the 88A. There is an 88 without the A, completely different speaker. All right. The big brother, the 99As, are well known. They are like notorious for really super good sound. The 88, a little bit less, so 77, la 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 la. You go on down the, down the ladder there. And so, uh, recently I saw a set of 99s, new in the box, hadn't been touched, go for almost five grand. Um, so, they're very expensive. A uh, pair of 99s without, you know, with just trashed, we'll, we'll go for a solid 400, 500 bucks. Hell, I've seen people just buy the darn wood cabinets for a couple hundred bucks. All right, these are the 88s, not the 99s. The 88s are uh, highly desirable as well. The 77s less so, but I'll tell you what, these things weigh a freaking ton, a metric ton. Not literally, but they feel like it. I don't doubt it. Each one of these is 40, 45 pounds. Uh, and then uh, in here, you have a 12, a four and a half, a three, and a horn. And I think the horn is, I don't know that it's a genuine horn. I think it might just be a tweeter fashion to look like a horn. But anyway, sounds really, really good. Uh, the refoaming has already been done on these. So actually, if you're going to buy a pair of these, you're just if they haven't been refoamed already, you're going to have to refoam these. These are fabric, so awesome sauce. The speakers alone, just a replacement 12-inch speaker for this, uh, a vintage original, is going to be 100, 100 bones, uh, and it'll probably need some uh, help. Uh, if you want a really, really good one, you're going to have to pay up. Anyways, so uh, generally, in general, this is a really, really good example. Uh, it's got a couple of dings and dents as they all will or many of them will that is but the real problem with this set is the crossover has stopped working for a uh, select few of the speakers and what we're going to do is rebuild the crossovers today so first we're going to take a baseline to see how it sounds um, with uh, maybe i don't know i'll choose some music that is pleasing uh, non-copyrighted so uh, we can listen to it freely and so on copyright please won't get me get, get me all right anyways let's get going okay to begin the calibration what we're gonna do is get the uh, decibel meter at 1000 Hertz to 80 and we're going to lock everything in and then I'm gonna play a snippet of music I'm not gonna drag you through the tone piece because it's just it's loud, annoying, and it's just not pleasant. So uh, just please trust that I got it there. And uh, if, yeah, if you didn't like not seeing it, then, well, buy a pair and, and do the tests. All right, we're going to play uh, about 30 seconds of this uh, video here. Okay, that was enough to get a feel for what it looks like. Let's get into this. Oh, wait, actually, I'm going to test the uh, individual speakers as well.
Uh, I'll just do that off camera. All right, after that very unscientific test that you just witnessed, I'm gonna call this one Sloppy Sam because he's all sloppy right here. And this one Faded Floyd because he's got some fading in here. Okay, so this is Sloppy Sam and he checks out pretty good. So uh, not to go over the other speaker because it pretty much looks the same. Now the issue becomes that this super tweeter on this side is quieter than that side as well as these uh, three inch, I think three inch, yeah, three inch are uh, noisier than the three inch on this side. So chances are it's capacitor, but, but let's take them out, recap them and see if that is the case. What you see here is a pile of electronicness happening here. These are the crossovers out of the 88s. These are crossovers out of a 77. Now I went and dug these out out of my spares box primarily because the coil on these are the same as these and I am uh, maybe possibly going to need them. You can see that the lead's broken. And uh, these, this one is Floyd. So this is actually the one that was working right. My guess is it was working right because um, the settings, and they were both set to the same settings, is using the 15 ohm coil instead of the 30 ohm coil, potentially, I'm hoping. Anyways, so the other issue that we're going to have is uh, this. Um, <laughs> these are the 50 uh, uh, microfarad. <laughs> This is a little bit of a size difference. We're gonna we're gonna have to figure out some way to uh, raise it, maybe make like a little bracket. I was gonna go out in my wood shop and see if I could make something real quick. Uh, the rest of these, so I've got a 30, 30, five, three, and one. All right, what I'll do is I'm gonna label all of these in their positions, and then I'm gonna take them all off. I'm gonna take good care of them because if we find out that these in fact aren't going to work, I'm gonna recycle. So that's that, good to go, let's do this. Some of the soldering is, is actually quite therapeutic. If you watch this here, the uh, it's like one of those satisfying things to watch. You see how it just soaks it up? Pretty cool, right? I don't know if you can see it through all that smoke. Good God, that hurt. That silly thing just flipped right back and, and, and punished me. All right, let's do this one here. So at this point, I'm actually, I've actually got the first capacitor unhooked. I got the coils all back on and they're nice and sturdy. Good stuff there. I did put some new um, uh, shrink wrap type stuff. I don't remember what it's called. Um, well, here it is. Heat shrink. Shrink wrap. Same thing, right? Uh, so anyways, I, I have that. I just had this wonderful idea too, is that I'm not gonna worry with making new brackets. I'm just gonna glue these to the old capacitors that are in here. I know that's not probably very funny, but that's what I'm gonna do. 
because I can because it's mine so I just glue those right to there now I don't have to make a bracket and I'm a winner winner chicken dinner all right so a little hot glue now I wanted to create like a baseline so I have a, a capacitor tester cap tester on this um, meter and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Dayton audio that's 50 microfarads and we're going to test it out it takes a second to get a good reading all right it should keep coming up all right there we go it's supposed to be a 50 I just slipped on accident that's why it went down to 35 okay so it's supposed to be a 50 and it's supposed to be 5 percent right these are typically 20 percent unless I don't know I don't know pioneer I don't know what pioneer made but generic ones are within 20 percent so this is supposed to be a 50 and we're gonna hold it on here for just a bit. It's starting to do the read. It's getting a little bit. Come on, come on, Betsy. 70, 70, yeah. Uh, that's really far off from 50 compared to this one. It's time for testing. Uh, what I like to do is, first of all, turn the volume down so I don't scare myself. Uh, just grab a speaker and just go line by line. All right, that one checks out. Let's go for the yellow here. That's probably the super tweeter. I was getting ready to do reassembly and I was putting up the CS77 crossovers and I just happened upon uh, this crossover that was sitting over there. This is a three-way out of, I believe, a JBL. I'm fairly certain it's a JBL. And these were higher-end JBLs. They weren't, uh, they weren't slop, but... <laughs> This is as big as the crossover is in a in a more modern speaker. Isn't that amazing? Um, this isn't nearly as as good. <laughs> just just putting it out there. This is the moment of truth. I was, I didn't know that I could pause this. It was kind of obvious it was right here, but anyways, uh, I got it dialed into roughly 80. So we're gonna go and let's do this.
Looking at the speakers, you can see there is a substantial difference in the upper end speakers. So on the left hand side, we have the red, which is before. Right hand side is the green, which is after. And if you just look across the tweeters in the mid-range, you see a substantial difference from left to right, which is good because that shows up in the next illustration, which is actually some really crappy screenshots. It's really, really hard to get the timing right on the videos and the video quality right and all that other stuff. But you get the point with the highlighted lines that before we recapped, it was pretty much just a straight ascending line. And then there's more of a curve now. And I think that is primarily due to how loud the tweeters are now versus how loud they were before. Put in the comments what you think the case is. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a good day.